Hi, everybody. It's Yvonne DeVita and Dr. Larry McDaniel with another session of Scratchings and Snippings Out Loud. Uh, hi, Dr. Larry. How are you today? I'm fine, Yvonne. I've got a little, I think a little bit of an allergy problem. I spent the evening in a cat-infested house last night, and I've had a little stuffy nose ever since. Uh oh, yeah, that sounds like an allergy. Funny. Here in uh, Rochester, something's in the air, like the pollen must be really heavy because every time I go outdoors, I have the same reaction. I'm ready for fall, and that will take care of my allergies, and you'll just have to avoid being in households with a cat. Right. So today, Dr. Larry, I was hoping that we could talk about Lyme disease and our pets. And the main reason that this topic came up is because as regular readers of Scratchings and Sniffins and the Purina Care Pet Insurance Blog know, I've been writing a little bit about Carmel, and Carmel has been a little under the weather here and there. Uh, so I took her into the vet, and while I was there, I noticed on the uh, receptionist's desk there was a sign asking owners if they had their dogs tested for Lyme disease. And there were several pets in the vet office um, they were all dogs, and they were being tested for Lyme disease. Now, this is kind of new to me. I didn't know that we tested dogs for Lyme disease. They asked me specifically during the exam, do you take Carmel out in the woods at all because she might need to be tested? Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, you know, Lyme disease is um, it's a problem for dogs and um, occasionally cats. More dogs are more commonly affected. They're more commonly affected at a younger age uh, than older dogs. And it's very similar to the to the disease complex that people get. It's caused by a bacteria that is spread by ticks. So it's kind of gross, but ticks get on you and they take a blood meal and if they're infected by the uh, this bacteria that they get from deer and other critters, they'll they can transmit it to people or to dogs, kind of at the end of that blood meal. They um, they're usually on there for 24 to 48 hours, and then they drop off. But right before they do that, they kind of regurgitate a little of their blood, and this is how the bacteria gets into the bloodstream of the dog or the cat or the person. And if it causes symptoms at all, it's kind of a very generalized thing. It's kind of tough to diagnose. There can be a fever, you know, it can be a fever and anorexia or an unwillingness to eat, just kind of a generalized sickness. There can be uh, swelling in the joints. There can be lameness. And it's, it's the same thing happens to people. And then in very, and in rare cases, there can be a, fairly serious uh, kidney infection that can result from Lyme disease. And that is, that's the most serious part of the of the problem for dogs. Wow. It, it's kind of new to me, although I've known about Lyme disease for a long time. So basically, the way I understood it when I was at the vet or the way I interpreted it was that these people who were having their pets tested were pretty much outdoor people. Um, and, and Carmel only goes in our backyard or around the neighborhood. So should I be worried about her? Should I have her tested anyway? Yeah, I think if they, if you live in the part of the country you live in, you know, the northeast and the north central states, those are the where this is most common. And, you know, with the, um, with the preponderance of, of you know, white-tailed deer up in your area, being in close proximity to urban environments and your dog is outside, it's probably not a bad idea for them to be tested. It is much more common in dogs that are, you know, kind of outdoors for a living, like uh, retrievers and hunting dogs, dogs that spend a lot of time outdoors, a lot of times in, in the woods, especially in rural areas. It's more common in those dogs. But if your dog could be sharing ticks with uh, infected wildlife carriers, then you know, not a bad idea to get tested. If you live in the middle of town, I don't think there's any reason to test, you know, unless you're going out in the country on the weekends and getting ticks. It's a it's a problem that uh, pretty much from 
springtime through November, you know, kind of the same time of year that the ticks are present. So we're still in that time of year. Absolutely, and uh, I have to admit that we live in a fairly citified section of town, except that it's far enough out or close to places where there are deer. We have seen deer in the neighborhood. Uh, That's interesting. I may have to take her in and have her test because she's still acting off, and I don't know what's wrong with her. You know, the th- there's a, only about 5 to 10% of animals that are infected with this bacteria. And it's called Borreliosis, by the way. Borrelia is the, the bacteria involved. Only about 5 to 10% of animals show clinical signs. 90 to 95% uh, don't show any clinical signs, and they they can test positive. So um, to the to the blood test. So uh, they can you know they can move into carrier states. They could come down with disease symptoms, and the disease the bacteria responds pretty well to a couple of different antibiotics. So if there is a carrier state, you know if your dog tests positive, generally the best thing to do is to put them on a course of antibiotics and rid them of this carrier state. It may take a month uh, worth of antibiotics to do the job, but uh, you can rid them of the, carry, of the carrier state. You can also treat with antibiotics if they're symptomatic, if they have fever and anorexia uh, and they have the swollen, painful joints, you can, um, you can treat them with antibiotics and manage the disease pretty well. It's just a kidney disease that doesn't respond very well. Okay, so basically it's a good idea for um, pet owners now to at least a subject with their veterinarian. Yeah, and you, and you can talk over vaccination too. The, the, the vaccine is a little controversial. I would talk with your own veterinarian about um, whether they think in their experience in their area that, vac- that the vaccination is a good idea. You know, as with all vaccinations, there are some slight risks associated with them, but um, I think your own veterinarian is probably the best source of of experience with the vaccine and whether you want to try to to control it with vaccine. The the other way to control it, of course, is to prevent the the ticks. And, you know, there are a number of ways of doing that. You know, my my favorite is this uh, prevent tick collar. You know, I think it works pretty well. Um, Mm -hmm. but, you know, that preventing ticks will prevent the uh, spread of the disease. Very good. Okay, well, I think that's great. It certainly helped clear up um, some confusion that I had. I hope it helps the scratches and sniffins readers. Well, thanks for your help today, Dr. Larry. Sure, Yvonne. Good to talk to you. Talk to you again soon.